Welcome to Eddington Machine Works, my name's Adam. Today I'm at Bicycle SA and I'm going to show you how to pull apart a Nexus 3 speed hub with back pedal brakes. So we need to undo the bearing tension lock nut using a 22mm cone spanner and a 17mm ring spanner. We can now remove the brake actuator arm as well as the bearing. To remove this circlip, we need to dig the corner of a small screwdriver in and twist like that. Don't put any downwards or sideways pressure on it, otherwise if the screwdriver slips you can do yourself some nasty injury. Dig the corner in and twist. We can now remove the cam roller assembly, which is also in the same unit as the planetary gear assembly. We can remove the ring gear assembly and that leaves the drive assembly which is accessed from the other side. So we need to flip this over, clamp it onto the flats and remove the bearing lock nut which is a larger thread than the bearing lock nut on the other side. Remove this bearing cone which should be tight right up to the end of the thread. Then we can lose some parts here. Pull it up pins and springs will drop out. As well as bearings. So that's two pins, two springs and two lugs. Plastic grease guard comes off. Shouldn't come off. And that completes the disassembly of the hub unit. We can further disassemble the axle by digging a special tool circlip remover in one of the two notches, one there and one there. The gap in the circlip is there. So we need to dig behind the circlip and twist around so we're under the circlip, like so. That releases the bell housing. A small spring with two end caps. A pin. A large spring, a washer, circlip, and large spring cap. To reassemble, you need to put the large spring cap on right up to the end of the spline, then the washer, then the large spring. Pull the spring back and insert the pin so that the keel faces the spring to act as a self-centering device. Then you need the small spring with two black end caps and slide that 
on the axle. Put the bell housing on and flip upside down. Okay, now comes the tricky part of putting the circlet back in. You need to put some pressure upwards. there. You then need to get the split in the circle clip opposite your thumb, trap it under the end, under the circle clip groove in the bell housing, then put pressure down with your thumb as well as keeping pressure that way to stop it springing out. Move the bell housing up and focus on the crossover point of the circlip until it clips home. Now we need to reassemble the drive unit. The spring has two ears, one short and one long. Put the short ear into the short, into the small hole. You then put the lug with the ear facing down behind the spring and put the put the lug put the pin in without losing the spring like that take 2 until it clips home and springs like that. Side number two is a repeat of side number one. You need the small ear into the small hole and rest against your finger. Push it behind the spring without dislodging it and rest against your thumb against your thumb and forefinger. Put the pin in and drop through the spring and the pull. So it should look like this with the spring safely springing. Keeping pressure on the springs there so that the pins don't drop out when you do that, you then need to put this over the bell housing and release. You then need to clamp it in the vise, drop the drive side bearing in and tighten up the cone nut. Inspect the cone nut before you do this for brunelling and tighten it right up to the end of the thread like so. Then lock that in place. Like that. Flip over. Now we need the head bearing. facing away from the cone and towards the cup in the hub shell. Now we need to install the ring gear assembly and close this lug like that. That's open, that's closed. Then we need to Flip these in and make sure these top lugs aren't stopping it. Okay, so 
The ring gear should be roughly level with the planet, uh, the sun gear. Next we install the planetary gear assembly and just wiggle this into place. Then the circlip. There should be enough clearance in this circlip groove to get the circlip over without rubbing against the uh, planetary gear assembly. Then we get the inner jaws of the Leatherman and clip this closed, making sure the circlip doesn't ride up like that. Um, that basically completes the reassembly of what I call the guts of the gear. Now we need to install the brake shoes so that the castellations here match with those castellations on the outside. We then locate the split in the hub in the brake shoe over this little spring here. The sole purpose of this spring is to provide enough friction to actuate the cam rolls which spread the brake shoes. Now we can put this into the large end of the hub shell. This in the vise on the flats of the axle. Put the bearing in with the bearing facing the cup of the bearing surface and away from the cone. Now there can be some false tension if the castellations sit on top of each other rather than twisting by 45 degrees and uh, mating height like so. Then we put the bearing tension nut on, tighten this finger tight, no tighter. Then the bearing tension lock nut. And lock these two nuts against each other. Now we can flip it around. and put the plastic grease guard on. This clips on. Then the pressed metal grease guard. Then the sprocket. Then the circlip. Again, putting tension that way against the trapped end of the circlip so it doesn't spring up like that. Then you just focus on the crossover point. Just roll it over with your thumb. Like that. When you take this circlip off it's very easy to uh, jab your fingers so you must dig a corner of the screwdriver in and press down. Then lift one end of the circlip over till it catches. And then it's just a matter of twisting your screwdriver. Make sure you keep your thumb over there so the circlip doesn't spring off into the far parts of the shed. Like that. Then you can take the pressed metal grease cap off, then the plastic grease cap off and that reveals the bearings and you can take the rest
stuff from the bottom side. When you put it back on, you need to trap one end of the circlip under while you keep pressure or tension on the circlip away from the trapped end, otherwise that can happen. And then it's just a matter of rolling over with the thumb.